The patient is a 50-year-old male with fossa stricture secondary to transurethral resection of the prostate. Risks and benefits were discussed. The patient consented for urethral reconstruction with transverse ventral perpucial island flap. On preoperative exam, the patient had a fossa navicularis stricture measuring 9 French. Additional relevant findings included no hypospadias or signs of lichen sclerosis. The patient was positioned supine. His genitalia and suprapubic region were then prepped and draped in standard sterile fashion. A gland stitch was placed to aid in retraction. A circumcising incision was made down to Buck's fascia. The penis was degloved. Tissue handling techniques are crucial and obtained by using magnification loops and proper instruments. Attention is directed to develop the proper plane between Dartos and Buck's fascia. Hemostasis was obtained with bipolar electrocautery. Degloving continued proximally down to the base of the penis. We then made a ventral urethrotomy from the meatus through the glands until we noticed normal urethral mucosal lining. This was calibrated with bougie dilators and was able to accommodate up to 32 French. Cystourethroscopy was performed. No further strictures were noted. Following this, we placed a 16 French suprapubic tube. We measured the length of the urethral defect, which measured 5 centimeters. We outlined the penile skin flap from the ventral penile skin, measuring five by two centimeters. Next, we made the proximal incision, delineating the skin island. This incision was only carried down to the dartos layer, preserving the underlying vascular pedicle. The flap was developed by dissecting proximally while lifting the skin down to the level of the mid penile shaft. Care is taken to avoid injuring subcuticular penile skin vessels. The sides of the flap were incised, and first the right and then the left side was liberated from underlying dartos. To promote careful tissue handling and preserve tissue integrity, single skin hooks were used for exposure rather than forceps. The final pedicle was noted to be broad and well vascularized. it was easily able to transpose and invert into the ventral urethral defect without tension. We then turned our attention to the glands incision. Lidocaine with epinephrine was injected into the glands to aid in hemostasis. We developed the glandular wings to ensure adequate mobilization to accommodate closure of the glands later. The glands incisions are carried down to the tunica albuginea at the tip of the corpora cavernosa. We then transposed and inverted the transverse Jordan flap into the urethral defect. Starting at the apex, the transverse island flap was fixed to the native normal urethral mucosa using fibrovicral interrupted sutures. The island flap was secured distally with interrupted fibrovicral sutures. Starting with the left side, a 6 continuous running suture was used to fix the flap 
to the urethral mucosa laterally. Keeping in mind careful handling of tissues and that final repair should be watertight and tension free. A running 6-0 was then used on the right side. The final meatal opening was able to accommodate a 30 French bougie. The 12 French urethral stent was then placed and secured to the glands. The glands was then reapproximated and the meatus was matured using a 4-0 vicral subcuticular suture followed by a 5-0 interrupted vicral suture down to the subcoronal area. The circumcising incision was then reapproximated with skin to skin anastomosis using 5 vicral interrupted sutures. The incision was then dressed with a clear film such as tegaderm. The patient was discharged the same day. The patient was seen at one week for a wound check and the urethral stent was removed at this time. On subsequent visits, the patient was satisfied with cosmesis and function.